Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We're starting a new series uh, basically related to health and well-being apps on the Smartwatch. And when we say Smartwatch, we're talking basically the Android-based standalone Smartwatch phone like this one, the ZGPAX S8. Now, before I begin, I got to tell you, I really wish I knew how to write apps. I would write one. It would be probably the best health app out there. You kind of see it in almost every watch that's promoting being uh, health conscious. And it's a simple little thing. What I would do is have a countdown timer. It would be available in the notifications bar. You could set it for whatever countdown time you want, say 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. When you touch the go in the pull down menu bar, it would start counting down. When it ran out of time, it would vibrate on your arm. And that would tell you to stand up and stretch. Concept, huh? That one thing, taking a break, standing up and stretching, is probably one of the best health things you can do for yourself if you're not doing it already. And of course, it would either automatically restart for another half hour, 45 minutes or hour, whatever you set, or it would stop after you touch it and you tap it again after you've gone out and actually walked to the coffee machine and come back and then uh, start it back up again right from the notifications bar. Yeah, it'd be a nice app. Should be simple to write. And I'd call it Gaifu, you know, a nice Japanese sounding thing, Gaifu. Get your fat, uh, um, get your plump derriere up, guy foo. Well, I digress. We're starting this series about pulses. Everybody wants to know their pulse all of a sudden. A watch ain't a watch. If it don't have a camera, uh, it doesn't do your pulse. So what's such a big deal about the pulse? Let's talk about that. We're going to not start on this watch. We're going to start on this watch. Anybody recognize an old 1990s, I think it is, vintage, regular, digital watch? This was a, 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 a real advancement. It had a little button-y kind of thing here that could actually, what? Take your pulse. Yeah. I mean, it did your basic uh, watch and date and stopwatch and alarm and chronometer and all these good things, countdown timers, and there was one called pulse. And what you would do is put your finger or your thumb over that little window, start it, and it would start taking your pulse. There it is, touch sensor, it says. Touch sensor, the trick was you needed to have light, like sunlight or something on that sensor. I don't know if you can see or not, but the little heart is starting to pulse. If I hold still, and I get a number. It says 73. That's a reasonable number. I can believe it or not. I can try it again and get 84 or 62, but that's basically what you get on smartwatches today anyway. This concept is exactly what's being used in the Apple Watch and in the uh, Android Wear watches and all the others that do your pulse reading. It's a little sensor that can tell the difference between the blood moving through the capillaries in your finger and discriminating on that so that it can uh, count your actual pulses. And it was out in a $10 grocery store watch, for goodness sakes. Never caught on, though. People weren't hot about pulses. But they are now. They really are now. And I'm here to tell you, you don't need a fancy watch with a pulse meter in it. You just need a watch that can download pulse software. So let's talk about that. Let's go into our health folder and take a look at what we've got. We've covered quite a few things like notes, and email, and text, and time, all about time in other installments of Smartwatch Ticks on our YouTube web channel. But health is a whole new topic. We have breathing. Oh, let's wait till we talk about the breathing apps. Next to your stand up apps, breathing is probably the best thing you can do. And we got some to talk about there. Relaxation apps. Also very important to be calm in mind and spirit. But health, we'll talk about 
heart rate right now. There's this app that's available actually on iPhone. Yeah, folks, you could use your old iPhone, uh, not the original, because, well, you kind of can as long as you get light on the camera. But uh, any of the newer ones that actually had a flash in there, you can use the camera and the flash sensor will turn on to provide the light source and you can take your pulse. I use it on the 4S all the time. I haven't gone above the 4S. That's my um, iPhone of choice, but Android, anything that's got a camera, and oh yeah, this uh, particular watch, the ZGPAX S8, has a camera. We can tap that thing, load it up, and do exactly what we did on this watch. Now it's already doing it. It's looking for a finger. So I'm going to give my watch the finger. Let's try it without the light first, see if we get anything. This is actually a graph of my pulse. Not doing too well. It's trying. I'm going to assist it by giving it some light. If you're in the sunlight or something, this is great. You can put it under a lamp, all that stuff. I'm going to be quiet now. You see that blue thing on the left jumping back and forth? That means it hasn't gotten a good connection yet. Jumping all over the place. So I'm going to use this really cool flashlight. This uses a double A battery and it's a high intensity. And look at this. I, I slide the front and it'll zoom focus. That is a cool flashlight. Yeah, try AliExpress.com. I think you can find it there. I'm not sure where I got this one, but it's really cool. So there's the uh, camera. I'm going to put my finger on it. i am zoomed this in now. And what you're trying to do is cover the whole camera lens and let the light shine through your finger. Yeah, it's coming up with 84. I don't really believe it, but it's not the best situation right now. Could be 84. I'm talking a lot right now. This app lets you save and uh, store your readings. And, of course, with the cloud, right from the watch, over Wi-Fi, you can connect back up and even send this to your doctor, ultimately, and you can track your pulse rate. Now, if you're outside jogging and doing all that good stuff and you got a good bright uh, sun shining down and you hold really still with your finger nicely over the camera, you will get relatively accurate readings, at least as accurate as all these other watches with the thing that is on the back that you put on your arm. I mean, I tell you, with hair and everything, that's got to be one of the most challenging ways to get a valid reading. At least here, you can put your finger or your thumb or something over it and get a, uh, a more calibrated reading by how much pressure you apply or let loose. And the fact that you could see the waveform going up and down tells you that you have the uh, ability to really get it to where it's working well. When it's working well, that circle goes around that you saw. And um, yeah, you'll be in good shape for getting accurate pulses. That works on this particular model. It'll work on any of the watches, the smart watches that have a camera and the ability to download apps. That's um, any of the Android watches in the Apple platform. I don't know if they've implemented this heart rate uh, app yet, but I do know that the Apple watch does not have a camera. So you would not be able to do this from the Apple watch. Hint? for version two of the Apple Watch, Apple? Anyway, that's about pulsing. And the last thing I'd like to say about it is uh, your pulse is just your pulse. If you really want to do something with that information, look not so much at your current pulse, although that's really good. It'll help you to see if you got too much salt intake, for example, if it's too high, those kind of things. Um, but look at your pulse recovery rate. If you're out there and getting some exercise and you get your pulse rate up to the proper level, and those of you who do any exercise know how to figure that out based on your weight and your age and all those kind of things, 
um, what your proper 80% of your maximum kind of thing is. Anyway, you get your pulse up into that zone and then you monitor what it's, uh, what your pulse change is over time. And you can use this kind of an app, even with this phone, with the camera. Once you get it figured out how to set it up properly, turn that down so it's not so bright. Um, and then you, you monitor your recovery time. And that's a really important number. How fast can you recover from heavy exercise? That's an indicator of your health. Okay, that along with get your fancy derriere up. <laughs> uh, anyway, you got it. You got to stand up. You got to move around. You got to stretch. Move your shoulders back, for goodness sake, because you're always hunched over looking at your watch or your phone, and you're going to get that bump in the back of your neck by the time you're 45. You don't want that. So stretch, stand move and tune back in because we're going to talk a little bit more about health, wellness, relaxation, and all the good stuff for the human body that the watch platform can give you.